You can read with me, please, from Mark 8. Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? That's Mark 8, 34 onwards. My brother, my sister, yes, you've heard that, I've heard that. If we want to follow him, we need to deny ourselves. There's one thing, when you give your life to Christ, you become a child of God. You become a child with God, that's one thing. But to walk with him then as a child, that's a different thing. That's totally something different. If God says, if you want to follow me, if you want to be my disciple, he says, it's not a cheap thing. To walk with me is not cheap. So deny myself has to do with God says, we will not have a cheap walk. We cannot have a cheap walk. God is a consuming fire. We see in Hebrews 13. God is a consuming fire. And if I want to walk with a consuming fire, there's a certain standard, there's a level that I need to go in through the grace of God, through the blood of Christ, where I need to deny myself. But who's the myself? Is that rotten stems? Is that flesh that is not from him? The cheap me. The cheap me. I need to deny it. The quality genuine you. God wants to walk with a genuine quality you. But for that quality, I need to deal with that what is cheap. Deny yourself. First of all, you remember the example of Peter three times denying Jesus. I don't know him. I don't know him. Now me and you, according to the word, we can have fellowship with demons. Paul says to the church, don't have fellowship with demons. He didn't say that to the heathen. He didn't say that to the atheist. He didn't say that to the Satanist. He said that to the child of God that can have fellowship. You can have some tea or some coffee with the devil. <clears throat> Not in the physical, please. But you can have fellowship with demons. What? Later in some other places it's called familiar spirits. You become very familiar with compromise. You become familiar with the sick jokes. You become familiar with the sexual jokes. You become familiar with the compromise. You become familiar with the spirit of slavery that must enslave you. To think you have a chimney, you know you must smoke, or you must drink, or you must this, or you must whatever rubbish. You become familiar with those things. But it's not familiar with the smoking, it's familiar that you have a fellowship with a demon at the end of the day. Become familiar with depression, become familiar with, with judgment, we're familiar with criticism. Oh, can you always criticize somebody else? Familiar with issues. There's always some other issue that you are having fellowship with. With somebody or something in your life. And for that, to follow that thing, I need to deny myself from a walk with God. Oh, you're a child of God, you'll go to heaven. But on earth, let me deny myself to have a walk with God. Let me deny myself to have a quality life with God and take up my cross, the cross of the flesh. Take up that rubbish and follow the rubbish. That's now to the side. But I say no. Like Peter denied Jesus. He said no, I don't know him. I will not know that criticism anymore. As from as you sit here, you make that decision in the spirit and you walk out with victory in Jesus' name. Let's say in Jesus' name. 
And therefore, you know the weaknesses in your life. You know the sin. You know the compromise. You know the things that are not right because we are not Jesus. We are human beings. Now make that decision to say, I will not know that anymore. I will not know that depression anymore. I will not know that negativity, that compromise, that rubbish talking, that flirting, that I will turn my back on that. And that is the rubbish me I will deny. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Is not take up the cross of Christ. No. When you gave your life to Christ, you died with him on the cross. Take up your cross. Is take up your identity. Take up your victory. Take up the quality that God has given you. Clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shoes for the readiness of the gospel, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith. Put it on. That is taking up your cross. Put on all the excellence that God has given you. Take it on. Deny yourself the rubbish. Take on the excellence and follow me. And come. For an excellent walk with the Father. An excellent walk with a master, your king, your best friend. God desires a quality walk here on earth that you will never have in heaven. Oh, it will be quality, it will be perfection. But a certain walk through the valley, through the storm, through the sea, through the desert. But where you have everything that you need and you will stand wow about God every day. Let the wow about God when you receive the manna from heaven, even if you're in the desert, that you will not expect it must just fall. It's the manna, the quails, the water, it must just be there. The clouds against the, the sun in the, in the, in the desert, the, the fire against the, the cold in the evening. Getting so used to it that I'm not grateful anymore. I'm not having a wow anymore about the miracles of God. What is the wow? Can you write down 20 things about the wow? Can you go tonight and write the wow? And then you write 20 things. Why there is still a wow in your heart about him? Then you will go through your desert and you will not die there. You will go for Canaan and you will have your destiny. You will have it. But my brother, my sister, let's deny ourselves the right for a cheap life. Hello. And turn our backs on that. I don't know you. All the roosters can, everybody say, Okay, that is with all the flesh before that will happen. You will deny your flesh three times in Jesus name. May it be so. Are you with me? I don't know. I will not know that anymore. I will not have an intimate relationship anymore, but I can so know the struggles. I can so know the issues I have with that person. I can have so know right the, down the five things that I feel about this and I feel about that and how I feel offended or I feel mistreated or I feel inferior or I feel <sighs> negative or whatever. Oh, I can so identify it. And those devils say, Amen. Let it be so in that man's life. All those troubles and all those compromise. Deny yourself the right for quality life with Christ and go into that rubbish more and more. But, or, when you come in a situation, you are so full of God, not full of nonsense, not full of whatever, that when you come into the situ situation, the word is just coming out. It's just coming out. But when you, I will deny that, and I will go for quality, then the word will work. Because you take up your cross, you take up the word in every facet of your life. And then the word will deal with the enemy. The word will deal with the enemy. You don't stand and fight the enemy. You deny it. You say, I don't know you anymore. All these demons, I will not have fellowship with demons anymore. I will not have intimate relationships with demons from hell. They will not become, I will not become more familiar with it. Familiar is, I'm okay with it. I'm okay to have bad thoughts. 
I'm okay to have issues with people. I'm okay to be negative. I'm okay to be depressed. I'm okay to, th to think in schemes of how I will do certain stuff. I'm okay with it. I'm familiar with demons and to have fellowship with them and we can have I'm okay that they come into this place. But God said, after he challenged the church with a lot of stuff, he says, but you're, you are a body. And the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. There's only one spirit that can be in you. Why you let all these other stuff come close to you? You are precious. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God has the universe, man. God has the excellence of heaven. But then the Holy Spirit are sent to come and live in you and me. In our bodies with a lot of weaknesses. That we need to sort it out. Amen. God is in you. God is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. But he will not necessarily walk with you. On a daily basis. Because walk has to do with excellence. It cannot be a cheap walk. 100% he will be faithful even if you are unfaithful. So he will not leave you to go to hell. He will keep you. And you will go to heaven. But on earth you can have such a quality life in walking not with a rubbish. Not walking with a negativity. Walking with a rejection. Walking with a bitterness. Walking with unforgiveness. But walking with God. But for that... God says, no cheap walk. You want to follow me? Nothing is cheap. It's quality. But you are quality. And because you are quality, I want you to walk with me. Remember we said that God in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve, when they sinned and they hide they, behind the bushes. And God said, Adam, where are you? God was not confused. God knew exactly where they were. <laughs> God wasn't confused. <laughs> Hello? He knew exactly where they were. But he was calling them out that they can deal with it and walk with him. Because he came to walk in the garden. And he called them. God wants to walk into destiny with you. And he's calling you because he wants to enjoy to walk with you. And for you to walk with him. Amen. Amen. So today, if God is calling your name, Dalia, Kieran, God is calling you out for a quality walk with him. Tomorrow you will not walk with your crisis. You will not walk with your success. You will not walk with whatever challenges you face. You will walk with him. And he will tell you what he and you are going to do with the challenges. And he will tell you. He will speak to you because he wants to speak to you. It's a desire in his heart. He wants to speak to you. Amen. Now if we say, yes, deny yourself. What did we say about, I'm crucified with Christ. So if he's taking up your cross, that's not that. Because Jesus took the cross and he took it up the hill. So that in that place. Me and him could die together. My flesh, my rubbish. My 100% rubbish in his 100% perfect body. Hello. But I've been crucified with hope, like we said. I died with hope. I've been buried with hope. I've been raised with hope. And I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places with hope. Let's say, I've been crucified with hope. I died with hope. I was buried with hope. I was raised from the dead with hope. I'm seated with hope in heavenly places. And from there forever, ever, ever will reign with Christ as kings and priests. Amen. Oh, Amen. So that's totally something different than to crucify myself and to lay down my life. No, that is destroy yourself. It's not deny yourself. 
Don't destroy your life with religion. Don't destroy your life with the issues. Don't destroy your life with, with all the stuff is that I want to try to do it right. This, the, that spirit of performance. Try to be accepted. If I do this, then people will accept me. Leave that demon alone that will tell you you need to do that rubbish. You don't have to swear. You don't have to tell sick jokes. You don't have to laugh at a sick joke. You don't have to compromise all this rubbish. Go for a quality walk with God, man. Hmm? Go for the quality walk. Why? Because you are quality. God didn't make rubbish. When you became reborn, everything, his excellence is in your spirit. And it's alive. You're with me. We're going to go with that. We're going to go with that. Not product of circumstances. Not product of your past. Not product what that guy or that guy or that guy did to you. Not what was robbed from you. You stand as the child of God. The Bible says, the word says, sevenfold the enemy must give back. Not you in the flesh. Tyrant stole from me, now I'm going back to him and I will steal all his stuff sevenfold more. No, no, not in the flesh. Amen. Deny yourself your flesh. I will not know my flesh anymore like that. Paul says, I will not know you after the flesh anymore. I want to know you in the spirit. And in another place he says, I want to know nothing among you. I don't want to know the flesh among you. All that demons and all that rubbish, what the enemy is doing among you. I don't want to know anything among you except Christ and him crucified. Christ and him crucified. That in your flesh, your flesh is crucified with Christ. In your spirit, the resurrected Christ. I want to know about you and Christ walking about you on the cross. You and the crucified Christ, you and the living, resurrected Christ. Those two. And we need the revelation of that all the way through. Till we see him face to face. Because forever I will need to deal with my flesh. So when you gave your life to Christ, it was I denied myself my whole life. And I was crucified with Christ in the cross, on the cross. And the Holy Spirit raised me from the dead. I was crucified in the one who gave perfection. When he died and he said, it is finished, he was the conqueror. He was not the conqueror when he was raised from the dead. Sometimes that type of teaching. Uh -uh. That was the job from the Holy Spirit because the Father promised, you will not see decay. God will not, according to the Psalms, according to Isaiah, God will not see him, his son, in decay. That his flesh will rot, decay, in death. No. Why? Because after three days he will be raised. That's the Father's promise. That was the job of the Holy Spirit. The job of Jesus was to come to earth and that he will die a perfect man. The perfect lamb. And even on the cross, the enemy tried all his best. If you are the son of God, get off the cross. Just prove yourself. Prove yourself. Ah, man, you prove yourself who you are. Prove yourself. If you say you are so-and-so, prove yourself. No, you stay focused on God and what he has for your life. Amen. And even the guys standing like that, Jesus just said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Because the Father want to slaughter, wanted to slaughter them. No. Jesus came to reveal the heart of the Father. So he saw the heart of forgiveness in the Father. And he explained the heart of forgiveness of the Father to them. And he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. And he explained the heart of his Father, even in his death. But with when he said it is finished, he died in success as the conqueror against Whatever the world, the devil, the flesh could bring against him. The word says he obeyed Christ even into death. So when he said it is finished, he said 100% success. 100% obedience. 100% faith. 
faithfulness. And in the one that said 100%, 100% success, you died with him. That's why you died with hope. Amen. So as a child of God, now I stand. But for every process, today, tomorrow, you have a choice. Deny yourself for a walk with God. Deny yourself the, the opportunity that if you forgive that person, if you respect that person, if you choose not to compromise, deny yourself to have then a wonderful walk with God. But keep it in yourself so that you can have a walk with bitterness and unforgiveness and negativity and depression. You want to walk with that rubbish? You walk with that rubbish. But God says, if you want to follow me tomorrow, if you can hear my voice calling your name, let's do life together. Let's say, I want to do life with my best friend, with my king and master, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's do life with him. And, but you will do life with some other spirit. You will do life with him, or you will do life with demons. Don't have fellowship with demons. But God will not force you. If, only if, you want to follow me. Deny yourself the rubbish. Take up your identity. Take up the quality that I've given you. And then follow me. That is a process. My brother, my sister, we will... Not struggle, but we will always have a thing to get that right till we see him. But Lord, let's ask God for his grace. Let's pray that. Let's push with that, you know. When we are in training and training for the rest of our lives, let's go for the fullness. But let's focus on that. Let's not focus with a struggle with a rubbish the whole time. Then life is a drag. Life is a, is a fight. Life don't have to be a fight the whole time. Fight the, the good fight of faith, the word says. Why? Because the faith will deal with that. The faith. Fight the good fight that you will win the devil. No. Fight the good fight of faith. Faith is from hearing, hearing from the word. Faith that believe in the word. And if you believe his word, you are safe. Because he believed the word, his daughter was healed. Because he believed the word, that God is true to his word. The truth set him free. He didn't have a, me and you don't have a fight with the devil and then we are free. Because we won the fight against the devil. When you clothe yourself, remember, who does want to be explained? With the helmet of salvation. And with the breastplate of righteousness, with the belt of truth, with the shoes for the readiness of the gospel, with the shield of faith from the from the word, with the word of with the sword of the spirit, the word of God. When you are clothed in that, and the enemy look at you, he looked at his failure. He's looking at his failure, because you are clothed in the word that totally slaughtered him. Because the Father said, it happened, and the devil and hell is dealt with. So when you are covered in the word of God, you're covered in the word of forgiveness, you're covered in, in I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me to be content, not to moan and groan. I am more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. I don't have a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Perfect love in me drives out all the fear. And I stand on the word, and I throw myself into the word, the word. Wax, Isaiah 55, 11. The word, like the rain comes down, so my word will come and not return to me void, Isaiah 55. But it will accomplish what I sent it for. You get into the word and what God sent his word for, it will be accomplished. It will not return void. Your life will not return void. But when you are in the word and the word works, you will accomplish. The one who meditates the word day and night, everything he does will prosper. Someone. Remember? So, 
But in, if the enemy look at you and you are filled with the word of bitterness, the word of rejection, the word of negativity, the word of comparison, the word of performance, the word of religion, he recognizes his own words. He, he recognizes that he can become familiar with you. You talk the same talk. And that is where you have fellowship with demons. Or they cannot be familiar with you anymore because you deny them the opportunity. Tomorrow, it's not like that spirit doesn't know you and you don't know that demon. But you choose more and more not to be familiar with him. You choose more and more to reject. Who had a relationship with somebody in your life and then more and more you just cut them out and you are not familiar with one another anymore. You don't know the heart of that person anymore. You, you can put him there in a box. You know him, but you know him from past experience. And, but you've cut him out of your life. Just like this. It's powerful. It can, you, uh, we had many successes in our lives in doing that. How much more when you're filled with the spirit against those demons? When you, they can become unfamiliar. Where yeah, they must not feel welcome with you anymore. Because they look at you and they remember their failure. They look at you and they see the word of God and say, when I look at him... I'm reminded by the fact that we failed. So in my agenda with that young man, I'm going to fail because he's so full of the word, not full of himself, Amen. full of the word. And we failed against the word. Amen. Amen. Come to love the word, come to enjoy the word into that place. And as you deny yourself and the flesh and the rubbish and the cheap stuff, and you take up your cross, the quality that God has given you, the excellence, you walk with him. And so because to try and save this thing, this, this cheap rubbish, to save the, cheap, save the cheap life that you think is life, you're going to lose it, God says. The one who wants to save his life will lose it. The one who's losing it for my sake and my word, it says, for, and for the gospel and for the truth. That truth is going to set you free to do what? To walk with Him. I bless you to have an excellent, excellent walk with your Master tomorrow. And not walk without Him into your crisis opportunity or into your success or into your failures or into whatever. But you will walk with a Master into that place. Father, come and set us free in Jesus' name. I pray that you will help us to understand. Holy Spirit, arrest our hearts, arrest our minds to come to a practical understanding of how to deal with all this rubbish. Forgive us for having intimacy, having fellowship with demons. Forgive us that a lot of stuff became familiar with us. Lord, that rejection and, and criticism and judgment and, and all this stuff could be at home with us. We turn our backs on it. We deny our flesh and all these things to have a relationship with us in Jesus' name. But God, as we turn then from those ways, we take up the cross. We take up the light that drives out the darkness. We take up the truth that will deal with a lie. We take up the love that will deal with the fear. We take up the peace that will deal with anxiety. We take up the joy of the Lord that deal with, with the depression. But we will go with the joy of the Lord as our strength. Teach us your ways, Lord. But God, we desire a quality walk with you. you calling us by name. God, you know everything. You know our lives. You know our everything. Still, you love us. Still, you care for us. Still, we are the dream in your heart. And in that place, we are safe. Safe to try again through your grace, your spirit, your blood. To stand up, to rise up. For a quality, excellent walk with you. I bless every man and woman with that life that is called eternal life. And that is to know you. In Jesus' name so we pray and all say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's give him a hand. Amen. Yes, man. Yes.